everybody. Welcome to the Fundamental Analysis webinar here with Abitrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting. As we get started, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, uh, just type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. OK, looks like we're up and running fine. Thank you. As uh, we go along, keep in mind that uh, obviously there's risk involved with trading. No one trade is guaranteed to profit, so you want to manage risk in a way that makes sense for you. And within our strategies today, as we simulate some moves, we will go over some of the unique features within our Web Trader and Abitrade Go app that can assist with your risk management uh, plan and calculations and such. Uh, and also keep in mind that what we cover is not meant to be financial advisement, but is coming from an educational perspective. Real quick for anyone who's new to things, what is fundamental analysis? Uh, basically, it's looking at the news, uh, different types of news. Uh, from around the world, from specific regions, uh, things that might affect instruments that you're interested in trading on. And so uh, you might look at an economic calendar at regularly scheduled type events, and we'll take a look at a, a, a couple or a few of those uh, within the session today and, and come up with some ideas on how you could trade around those uh, regular type announcements. Uh, tomorrow's a big one, by the way, with uh, the non-farm payroll announcement out of the U.S. It's a, an announcement once a month uh, that tends to be one of the bigger announcements of the month each month. Uh, and then also there can be other types of fundamental news like extraordinary economic events, uh, headlines that break about any number of different things uh, happening around the world, could involve war, could involve uh, you know global pandemic. If we want to talk about recent examples, uh, these sorts of extraordinary economic uh, events, you might not think of them as economic events, uh, but, but certainly large events can affect uh, the economies around the world and, and the instruments that you trade on. And so those are different types of fundamental news that we need to account for within our trading strategies, and we'll try to take into account those extraordinary type things as well uh, within our session today. Now, if you have any questions as we go along, feel free to, to type your questions or your input in the chat box at any time. Now, uh, starting from our main website, if you do trade from uh, mobile, then you might use our Arbitrate Go mobile app. Uh, you can use the MetaTrader mobile apps for the MT4, MT5 accounts, but also the Arbitrate Go mobile app will trade on those same accounts, just like our web trader. Uh, but with advanced functionalities that can help you with risk management, with signals, with fundamental news, etc. And so uh, the Arbitrate Go app is an option to trade on your MetaTrader accounts. Uh, and you also obviously have available our Web Trader also to trade on your MetaTrader accounts with those advanced tools. And so, and that's where we'll, we'll start our session now. Uh, if you log in from the upper right corner here from our main website, you'll be in our Web Trader. And so, given that this is a fundamental analysis webinar, uh, what we'll do is, is go ahead and get into some of the fundamental tools that are available to assist you uh, with, your, with your trading strategies. And so, I alluded to the fact that there are some uh, large announcements today, tomorrow, uh, that, that can affect the markets quite a bit for specific regions and for specific currency pairings. And so, uh, if we look at the tools here that are listed under the, the globe symbol, uh, we call it the discovery section, we can start then on uh, the economic calendar, which those of you who've used economic calendars in the past might think, well, what's the big deal? Uh, you know, the basic tools are here that show you the previous numbers, the forecasted numbers for the current announcement, and then the column that shows you the current numbers as they come in. And you know, typically, if the numbers come in better than expected, the currency for that country tends to be more bullish. And if the numbers come in worse than expected, the currency for that country tends to be more bearish. Uh, bullish meaning getting stronger, bearish meaning uh, weakening. It's not always 100% uh, that way, but that, that's the general trend and the general idea with watching these announcements as they come in. Now, uh, we, we can specify the date and since today is the seventh let's only look at the seventh for now and we can see a number of announcements that were rated as high level meaning if the importance is 
in this column is listed as high or medium, it means it has a pretty good effect on movement on the charts for currency pairings uh, for that country for whom the announcement is for. Uh, and, and if the numbers come in significantly better or worse than expected, then you tend to have even more movement. Uh, you know, for example, this, this announcement uh, for uh, unemployment rate came in as expected. 2.1% was the expectation, came in at 2.1%. Well, you tend not to get such dramatic movements in that situation compared to if it had come in significantly below or above that number, okay? Uh, you still probably had some movement from this, but uh, you tend to look for numbers that diverge from the expected number if you want the larger movements and maybe more predictable directionality. Uh, so let's scroll down to announcements that have not occurred yet. Uh, the initial jobless claims out of the U.S., uh, it's at 3.30 my time, which is in uh, about two and a half hours, a little less than that. So uh, the, the platform should update to your local time and show the, the time in your area that the announcement will be. So it's, it's coming up this afternoon uh, in, in just a couple hours' time. And we can see that it's a high-level announcement, meaning high volatility expected around the announcement. and uh, we see the expectation is that the initial jobless claims will tick up, okay? So it's expected that it'll be kind of uh, bad news, right? That, that jobless claims, meaning more people applying for unemployment benefits, basically, more people claiming that they don't have a job anymore is expected to be higher this time than the last time, okay? And that kind of fits in with the idea of, what the U.S. has been trying to do, and really globally what many countries have been trying to do by raising interest rates and trying to slow down inflation, uh, you know, it's a necessary evil that as you do that, uh, it might hurt jobs numbers and, uh, you know, businesses get hurt if inflation is forced to come down with higher interest rates, you know, business loans are more expensive, uh, you know, all kinds of costs go up when you raise interest rates to bring down inflation. And so uh, it, it's expected here that there could be an uptick in jobless claims from the last numbers to the current ones. But what if they come in significantly higher than expected or significantly lower than expected? Then, then you could really have quite an effect on the movement. And what we can do with this tool over here if we click on the one that says volatility, this is the one I like best, it data crunches for you from the past times that this announcement came in to show you with different currency pairings, all of them involving the U.S. since it's a U.S. announcement, we can pick different currency pairings with the U.S., GBP, USD, Euro, USD, et cetera. Uh, we can pick different time periods after these past events to see how far did it move and in what direction and we could qualify it as to whether it came in above forecast or below forecast, okay? And so let's do that. We'll leave it on Euro USD four hours after the event. And if this comes in worse than expected, above forecast in this case is worse than expected, meaning more jobless claims than expected, what was the result in the past? And we see 75% of the time that has caused the USD to strengthen and pull down the Euro. Okay, so uh, that's the effect if they came in above forecast. What if it came in below forecast? 71% of the time, then the euro went up and strengthened over the USD. Uh, so we see here that if, if it was, uh, in this case, better than expected numbers, initial jobless claims below forecast, the euro strengthened, then the USD weakened. And you'd say, why would the USD weaken with good news? And it could be the fact that the USD tends to be a safe haven when there's fears about the economy. And so uh, whatever the case may be, you don't even need that rationale necessarily in your mind to ask why if you're trading on the data. And that's really what this tool is for, is not trying to question in your mind the why, but to look at the data from the past and, and use that data to do what's called data-driven trading. And so with this particular announcement, if jobless claims have come in below forecast, 
71% of the time after four hours, the movement has gone up with an average range movement of near 50 pips. Okay? And you could say, yeah, but maybe once the numbers come in, that move has already occurred, meaning it's too late. It moves in the first, you know, 30 seconds, it's up 50 pips maybe, and you missed it. But that's actually, you can see whether that's the case or not, because I can say, okay, within the first five minutes after the numbers came in below forecast, the average range movement was only 12 pips. And look, most of them went down in the first five minutes. Average range movement, 12 pips. After four hours, most of them were up with, with a range movement of nearly 50 pips. So not only did it not move the full range movement in the first five minutes, only a fraction of the movement, but it also, in many cases, in the first five minutes, had a false move in the opposite direction. Right? 71% of them went down in the first five minutes, but after four hours, most of them were up 71% of the time. So uh, it's interesting to look at this data, and if you trade off of the data, perhaps you can find success moving forward like you would have in the past. Okay? Trading in the direction that the data shows makes sense to trade. Okay? Uh, and so that's just one announcement as well. And in this case, it looks like in either direction, whether it came in below forecast or above forecast, you end up with a statistical advantage, either in this case buying, or if it was above forecast, selling on the Euro USD. Okay, and you can check other currency pairings. Like, you know, the range movement here is 51 pips or so on Euro USD after four hours. If we go to GBP USD, the range movement tends to be larger. Okay, 60. Five pips almost, not 51 pips. But then look what happens to the predictability. Only 50-50. Okay? So sometimes with increased range movement with some pairings, you have larger potential for profit. You also have decreased predictability with that increased volatility that different pairings have. Although even with this 50-50, the ones that went in the downward direction were much larger than the ones that went up. So still, even if you lost twice and won twice, you'd be up, right? Because the, the upward movement was smaller after four hours compared to the downward movements that were much larger, okay? But you do see differences in predictability with different pairings, from 50-50 on GBP USD to 75-25 on Euro USD in this example, okay, in that direction. All right, so you, but you can play around with the different pairings and see which ones have the best statistical advantage from the past that you might want to try and place a trade on. Here's USD JPY. Shows the opposite direction, and, ha and a quarter of them ended up neutral, okay, meaning it didn't move at all. And, and, and why would that be? Because you have two safe haven currencies with USD JPY. With fear, they both tend to strengthen, and with economic optimism they both tend to weaken and so no wonder two of the time or 25 percent of the time they didn't move at all they finished without going up or down they're fighting each other so i don't like this setup with usd jpy and it seems the most predictable movements in this announcement is with the euro usd okay and so this is the type of preparation you can do before each major announcement to know which ones show for the upcoming week the largest statistical advantage based on how the numbers come in, which ones have the, the best advantage for me to be able to trade after the numbers come in in that first five minutes maybe and, and project what it will do then over the next four hours uh, and, and have the best uh, risk-reward ratio for me, okay? And so, and that's just one example of one announcement. We could look at the building permits out of Canada. Uh, we can we can look at the non-farm payroll announcement tomorrow, and and we might see similar advantages. So uh, USD Canadian on the Canadian announcement uh, four hours after the event, uh, if it comes in above forecast, it's 50/50. Okay, I don't see any statistical advantage there. If it comes in below forecast, 80/20. Now that's interesting. In one direction. 
I'm not interested in trading. If this comes in uh, above forecast, I'm not going to trade based on this data. Although it does show a much larger upward movement compared to downward, it is 50-50. But still, it's an advantage to buy here, even if it's 50-50, based on the size of the movement when it went up was much larger than the size of the movements that went down. Okay, So even when the percent advantage doesn't look like an advantage, sometimes the movement characteristics in terms of size of movement still shows an advantage. Okay, So if this comes in above forecast, buying and it looks advantageous, uh, you might lose half the time but and win half the time, but the wins look like they could be larger than the losses when this announcement comes in above forecast. But I tend to like to see a, a percent advantage as well, personally. Uh, if we look below forecast, wow, look at the, the, the advantage. This is the one I would want to trade on, okay? Because it also goes up larger than they went down, but it also goes up 80% of the time. It only goes down 20% of the time when the data comes in below forecast on the building permits out of Canada. So uh, below forecast makes sense in your mind also why the Canadian dollar would weaken the majority of the time if their building permits came in below forecast. It means things are slowing down in the, the building industry. So naturally your currency might weaken from that kind of bad news. So it makes sense that the US dollar would go up the majority of the time against the Canadian if the building permits come in below forecast. Okay, and so sometimes I am playing that mental game and not just doing data-driven trading. I'm trying to find announcements that make sense in my mind and also that there's a statistical advantage with the data, okay? And this one fits that category. So in this one, I would be selective. I only want to trade if it comes in below forecast. That's where I see the largest statistical advantage, and it also makes sense in my mind that below forecast would weaken the Canadian versus the USD. OK, whereas the above forecast doesn't make sense to me that the Canadian should weaken uh, when the numbers came in better than expected and the movement's only 50 50. So that one, I if it came in that way, I would choose not to trade maybe. But if it comes in below forecast, I'm probably ready to go as long as within the first five minutes, this 50 pip range isn't already realized. Right. So in the first five minutes, if it's moved like in the past, only around seven pips, then even if I get in after this small rise, it still has another 40 pips or so to go according to the statistics in the past before it would be done moving, okay? So uh, you can go through with an exact trading plan based on this data out of this advanced tool, okay? And, and by the way, this tool usually costs money from Trading Central. Uh, we provide it for free. You don't have to, to go and pay them for this tool. And, and if you tried to go and, and find all of this data from the past announcements to measure the movements on the charts, find the date and time that these announcements came in the past and look at whether they came in better than expected or worse and measure the direction of movement over different time periods for each one, and come up with these types of statistics, it would take you forever. So this is, is a very powerful tool that saves you a lot of time to analyze the past movements in a very simple way, okay? So there's a couple announcements today that you might be interested in trading on, and maybe selectively only if the numbers come in a certain way. Uh, the US announcement showed a statistical advantage in both directions, if the numbers come in above or below forecast. Uh, the building permits only showed for me an advantage if they come in below forecast, statistically speaking, from the past. Uh, and obviously, you can interpret this data differently. That's the, the uniqueness of each trader in the end as to what you're going to choose to trade on or not. Now, uh, if I then go and look at tomorrow, we have some whopper of announcements coming out of the US. As I alluded to, the non-farm payroll announcement, uh, it's the largest announcement typically viewed by traders each month out of the US. Uh, 
by non-farm, they mean it ex excludes the farming industry, which tends to be seasonal with its job hiring, uh, and so shows the rest of the economy in terms of the hiring. And so we can take a look at the, the statistics real quick. Uh, Euro USD, four hours after the event, we can obviously switch those time periods and currency pairings up. Uh, if this comes in above forecast, slight statistical advantage for the Euro to go up against the USD. I don't like that percentage. It's too close to 50-50. It's a large range movement, but hard to predict the direction. I mean, look, the size movements up and the ones that went up are similar to the size movements down as to the ones that went down. To me, this looks very random. Large volatility up and down with range movement, but predictability of direction, it's not there for me in the statistics. So I would choose to pass on trading on this uh, if I'm looking at this four-hour window. Perhaps in the first hour, it's different. Still 57%, 43%, looks 50-50 to me. Uh, in the first 30 minutes, same thing, 50-50, large movements up and down, almost evenly distributed. Not something I'd be interested in trading on if it came in above forecast. What about below forecast? Now, all of a sudden, it's a huge statistical advantage. If these numbers come in worse than expected, the reaction has been a very strong movement up or a very small movement down. This is the type of statistical advantage that, that I personally and many traders like to see if you're going to trade off of data-driven trading. And so uh, look at the size of the upward movement, 75% of the time, nearly, what, 90 pips, 81, 82, 83, uh, 85 pips movement up. And the one time it went down, look how small it went down over the four hours after the event. If the numbers come in worse than expected on the, the non-farm payrolls. Okay, so huge statistical advantage here in the four hours after the event if it comes in below forecast. It wasn't the case if it came in above forecast from the past data, did not show a statistical advantage. So uh, again, I would be selective with this if I'm trading off the past data and say I'll only use this data to trade if it comes in below the forecast, then I'll choose to buy as long as this range movement hasn't been realized yet. I'm expecting based on the past up to about 80 to 90 pip rise in the four hours after. If in the first five minutes, it's only only gone up like it's showing here, what 30, between uh, 15 and 30 pips in the first five minutes, or maybe it even spikes down in the first five minutes, then it's a no brainer for me if I expect after four hours this result, 75% of the time anyways. And if I win three out of four times doing this, and we can only test it once a month, right? So they take you a while to compile your own data uh, to see how well it's working for you. And you can't judge it on the, the first try necessarily because we know one out of the four times it lost, right? So if you try it four or five or six times over the next five or six months, uh, and you come out with 75% success rate on those that come in below forecast, then tremendous, right? Uh, so again, things to add to your checklist for the week, announcements you might be interested in trading on, and also already know you only trade in certain directions based on how the numbers come in, okay? Okay, uh, Hannah, you're asking, even if you have 75% uh, statistics like we just looked at, uh, based on, on the current, oh, you're saying based on one event. Well, we're looking at one event at a time, but we're looking at multiple announcements for that one event. So this is the way you would look at statistics for the non-farm payroll, is to look at multiple times that the non-farm payroll came in and see what the statistics are. So that 75% bullish movement, we're not talking about 75% of traders are buying or selling on one event. We're talking about 75% of the past events resulted in a bullish movement if the data came in uh, worse than expected, lower than expected on the non-farm payrolls. So I think we're talking about two different things. I don't mean 
when you log in uh, to our app or, or you're looking someplace where it shows currently 75% are buying or currently you know, 64% are selling. That's not the statistic we're talking about. We're talking about the actual move after past uh, events for this same event, after past announcements for this same event, okay? So I think maybe it's a little confusion between two different things. Okay, uh, what else can we look at here? Are there other things coming in? Now these came all come in at the same time, right? Since we saw a big statistical advantage from this announcement, we don't necessarily want to look at these others. Maybe you do to see if there's a better statistical advantage. Like I can look at average hour, hourly earnings, which will come in at the same time, and maybe I'll see that I'd rather queue on this instead of the payroll numbers. Maybe it has a better predictability. I don't think that'll be the case. Let's see. Above forecast, 75-25. It's the same statistical uh, numbers, predictability-wise. Below forecast, 67-33. Okay, so maybe one of the directions, since this is predictive in both directions, and the, the non-farm payroll numbers was only predictive in one direction, uh, then maybe you could use this set of data for the other direction. Okay, it's hard though. You start to it gets more confusing when you try and trade on more than one announcement in different directions on the same instrument at the same time. Okay, so you, my recommendation I think would be to pick the one you think shows the strongest statistical advantage, uh, and then go with that one if they're all at the same time. So if we want to look at another one for tomorrow, let's go to the one that's after this uh, slew of data comes a bit later, an hour and a half later. Okay, and so it's consumer sentiment. And so if we look at the consumer sentiment for uh, tomorrow, you might find another one to put on your list. If this comes in above forecast, two thirds of the time, we've got a large statistical advantage downward from the past to trade. If this came in uh, below forecast, or I'm sorry, above forecast, the USD tends to strengthen if the consumer sentiment is better than expected. It makes sense. If if the consumers are showing better sentiment about buying things, it makes sense that the USD might strengthen. And two-thirds of the time, that's the case from the past announcements. Okay? And then we could say, what if it comes in worse than expected? It's 50-50. So uh, bad numbers on this doesn't tend to affect statistically what's going to happen, but better than expected numbers tends to strengthen the USD two-thirds of the time. And so it's it's good to know that that's what's happened in the past as you go into watching the current numbers come in tomorrow. And you might choose to only have a plan that I'll trade in the direction uh, that uh, shows the statistical advantage, which would be in this case, if they come in above forecast, maybe you're willing to sell, depending on entry point you can catch in the first, say, five minutes. But if it comes in, Below forecast, the statistics maybe aren't strong enough to make you want to trade, okay? And and you can have a different interpretation of the data as well. Maybe you're looking to trade on pullbacks, in which case, if it's 50-50 movement, you wait for one movement and then trade on the pullback in the opposite direction, uh, but that's a whole different strategy. It's not something we've been going over right now. We're going over the idea of whatever direction it it's expected to go in four hours trading on that direction if the statistical advantage looks strong enough. And so as not to confuse anybody, we won't switch uh, strategies at this point. Okay, but I, I guess my point is there's more than one way to use this data for trading. It's not just always trading in the direction of the statistical advantage. You could be looking for ones that don't show a statistical advantage that tend to have less strong of a continued move uh, and and then trade on pullbacks perhaps, okay? So it doesn't mean you can't trade on the ones that are more 50-50, you just would trade on them differently perhaps, okay? Any other questions at this point? I'll pause for a moment. Okay, I don't see any other questions popping up, but if I do, I'll, I'll try to address them. Uh, okay, so another tool we could use, and we used up uh, a good chunk of the time here on those announcements, but let's take a look maybe at the market buzz. If you're not familiar with the market buzz, it's a, it's a fundamental news tool. 
It brings up recent news uh, articles and mentions on social media, uh, news websites, pulls all that information and puts it in a news feed for whatever instrument you want to trade on so you can see the most recent updated information. Okay, so if you're interested in the video or whatever it might be, and by the way, the larger, larger the circle in that pictogram, the more it found articles and trending online about it. Uh, it does do the technical analysis as well, this tool. Price may fall 13.6%. If we click on the trend analysis, you get the support and resistance levels drawn. You get the directionality that's predicted, so your take profit uh, might be in the region of these red lines. That's the area where they see support levels down below. And the direction that's predicted, you see the arrow, is that it will drop, and they even give you a percentage drop that they expect, 13.6%. Now, this blue line is what they call the pivot line. If it goes above that blue line, then the sell signal is off. Then they're saying if it does break above that blue line, something changed fundamentally, and they would expect then further rising towards the green lines up here which are resistance levels from further back in time up higher, okay? So you've got the technical analysis broke down. They even talk about the indicators that were looked at and the key price levels as you read the, the information below this chart. Beyond that, you've got the fundamental news ticking in uh, about whatever instrument you clicked on. So these articles give you information that's related to NVIDIA, for example, okay? So it's a very powerful tool uh, to find information quickly about what you might be interested in trading on. Okay, I have uh, a trader that, that's new to AvaTrade uh, and new to trading, I think, that's asking a pretty general question that, that a lot of traders ask uh, from one time uh, to another, and that is, what's the best time for someone to trade? Uh, so whether you're in South Africa, uh, or, or or Australia or Canada or wherever you might be, uh, it doesn't change the fact about how the markets move in different time frames uh, with different instruments. So uh, the fact that you're in South Africa, maybe it affects you because you sleep at a different time than somebody in another region. Uh, but other than that, the markets aren't going to move any differently because of your geographic uh, location or, or time zone, obviously. But uh, I think more what you're asking is, uh, you know, what time of day is best to trade in general for anybody? And, you know, I would say there is no one time that's best to trade because all traders have different types of trading strategies. And so if, if you're a trader that relies on, upon a high volume of trading that many times results in larger movements on the charts, uh, and, and breakthrough movements that can break through price levels and keep going, uh, many times that occurs when the larger economies are trading, like the European Union, UK, US market timeframes, especially when they're overlapping, when the US market opens and the European and UK markets are still open, you have the largest volume of trading at that time. And you also have announcements that are keyed on by traders maybe more, like the non-farm payroll announcement tomorrow uh, is at a time exactly like that and it's an announcement that could result in much larger volatility and movements than if you were trading early early morning hours be, you know when the european market is just getting going and the and the us market's not awake yet and so you can imagine the different trading strategies that would be effective during a time when the us market's not open yet you don't have those large announcements you know one trading strategy might work well but if you use that same trading strategy, when the U.S. markets open and you have these large announcements out of the U.S. coming in, that same trading strategy might completely lose and not do well. And you need a different strategy for that type of movement and that type of volume of trading. And, and uh, you know, it, it's dynamic throughout the day in terms of what type of trading strategy works best when. And that's for each trader to figure out. What are your hours that you're available to trade? Are you available to trade at only certain time frames because of your job, because of your geographic location? Maybe you're not able to trade during US market hours. Maybe you are. Maybe you can only trade during European, UK market hours or Australian market hours, etc. So you have to figure out your personal schedule and what works. 
and then come up with trading strategies that work for that those time frames of trading okay so I know that's a long-winded answer to what you probably thought was a pretty simple question uh, but that actually is a very important question that doesn't have an easy answer because you need to figure out for yourself the time frames you can trade and what are the market conditions like during those time frames and then develop strategies that work best for those market conditions okay very good question actually uh, and, and sometimes new traders come up with questions that seem basic but are actually very important questions with with somewhat complex answers that, that can help even experienced traders so thank you for the question okay the question is when do you US and United Kingdom or European markets overlap uh, so if, if you look at uh, say 9 9 a.m. Uh, New York time, U.S. time, 9 a.m., uh, that's when the U.S. markets open. And uh, for the next couple hours, the European U.K. markets are not closed yet, okay? So it would be in the, in the first minutes and hours after the U.S. market opens, you've got an overlap with also European and U.K. markets still being open. Before then, a couple hours later, they're closed. And now then it's just the U.S. market running uh, with those other markets going offline then, okay? Not, not that you can't still trade on some of the instruments that are traded on the futures, but the, the exchanges in those countries eventually close, okay, as others open. Uh, so good question. And it's certain windows of time. Maybe you're looking to see when the, the Asian markets overlap with the European markets. Maybe that works better for you. Uh, so there, are, and, and you can pull up a pictogram, you could easily Google it and find it online, a pictogram of how, it's like a time bar that shows when different markets open and close, and you can actually, through pictorial way, see when different markets overlap at different times, okay? Whether, like I said, that's Asian markets and European markets, uh, maybe the Australian market and the Asian markets, etc. okay? Very good questions. All right, so uh, maybe we look at another example here of uh, instruments that have news trending on them. Amazon's the biggest one. Let's see what's going on with Amazon. If there are any articles that pop out, if the you know the trend analysis maybe pops out at us as being uh, interesting to look at. We see Amazon doesn't have a trend analysis telling us that they expect a big move up or down. We don't see that listed here. Uh, but we do see a number of articles regarding Amazon here, okay? So you can take a look at the news feed and, and see what's happening on any instrument that you want uh, as you go along. Now, I think this is a good place maybe to stop. We've been going for nearly 40 minutes uh, covering some of these fundamental news strategies. So uh, my recommendation if you're going to use the economic calendar, if you're going to use the market buzz, take some time at the beginning of the week to look at the instruments you're interested in using those tools, even before the market's open over the weekend, and have a plan for which announcements, which instruments you're interested in trading on under which conditions, uh, and, and then you're ready each day. You know what you're waiting for, especially in terms of the economic calendar and those announcements that you identify have the, the strongest statistical advantage from the past. Okay. I see another question has popped up. Okay, yeah, uh, you're asking a technical analysis question. Uh, are there any indicators that show you when the market might change direction? I would say pretty much all of the indicators are basically designed to try and tell you when they think the market will change direction or not. Uh, and, and I think using indicators for that purpose are a good idea, but Pair that with the fundamental analysis as well. So that if the indicator is telling you, for example, uh, I don't know, the US 500 is oversold and should rise. But then you look at the fundamental news and everything tells you in the fundamental news that there's fear on the markets and, and, and that the markets look like they might plunge, then maybe you don't go with the indicator's recommendation that it's time to buy. But however, conversely, if the indicator tells you, hey, it's uh, time to buy on the US 500, 
Uh, it's reached a support level, it's oversold, et cetera, the things that the indicator's looking at, uh, and the indicator's telling you to buy. Uh, and the fundamental news then shows you, hey, fear is down, you know, the jobs numbers came in strong out of the US and looks like the markets will rise, whatever the case may be. If the fundamental news in your mind also supports buying, and the indicator says it's time to buy, then now it makes sense to follow what that indicator is saying. So I would selectively use indicators as part of a checklist that I'm checking the fundamental news, I'm checking the signals, I'm checking uh, what the indicator says. And if they all agree, or if the majority of the information agrees, then I'll make the move. And that's, that's kind of the way many traders will operate at, with a trading strategy. Because the indicator is a trading tool, but a trading strategy makes use of more than one tool as kind of a checklist of things that you're looking for before you make your trade. So very good question. And yes, like you, like you said in your question, we will cover technical analysis more in my Tuesday evening webinar, uh, 6 p.m. UK time, okay? All right, everybody, thank you for joining. Good luck with the trading. Hopefully you uh, can catch some good moves on the announcements coming in today and tomorrow. And uh, I'll see you next week if you're in the, the Tuesday webinar, okay? All right, bye for now.